Understanding evolution actually requires three theories, variation, inheritance, and selection. The latter two are well developed, but how does nature generate the heritable variations upon which nature selects? Biologists have generally assumed that phenotypic variation arises randomly as a result of genetic mutation. If this were true, then the evolutionary story would be one of gradualism. But the history of life suggests bursts of innovation followed by long periods of relative stasis. Life appears to have evolved evolvability. Kirshner and Gerhardt's theory of facilitated variation offers an explanation. Early life evolved a set of conserved core processes which are highly constrained and utilized by all subsequent forms of life. Indeed, mutations in these core processes would now be lethal, but the processes are also modular. As such, their high level of constraint actually deconstrains the range of variation that can arise from their selective and integrated use. Consider the highly constrained structure of Legos. Lego dimensions are very precise, but constraint is what allows so many different things to be assembled. Similarly, Kirshner and Gerhardt see evolutionary adaptation as the deployment of highly constrained core processes in different amounts, times, and places. Kirshner and Gerhardt's theory provides three principles for how this works. Weak linkage, exploratory processes, and compartmentalization. Let's look at the first. Weak linkage refers to the coupling of inputs and outputs in such a way that the signal is minimally instructive and the result is maximally prepared. Consider the electrical outlets coupling the power grid to your computer or refrigerator. The constrained structure of the outlet and plug make the system highly adaptable. After all, the outlet doesn't need to know how a computer or refrigerator operates. The linkage will even work for appliances yet to be invented. In cells, conserved core processes are linked to signal molecules via universal signal transduction systems that evolved eons ago. The signals are minimally instructive, yet capable of triggering conserved core processes in varying amounts, times, and locations within developing organisms. On the left is a forceps-like beak ideal for dealing with fruits and seeds. On the right is a heavier beak ideal for cracking nuts. Natural selection provides an elegant explanation for how these varied beaks came to be preserved in different habitats, but how do the variations arise in the first place? Apparently, by varying the expression of a signal protein called BMP. BMP modulates the deployment of conserved core processes in the cells and tissues giving rise to the beak. The smaller forceps beak results from lower levels and a shorter duration of BMP expression during development, whereas nutcracking beaks result from higher and longer levels of BMP expression. Simply vary BMP and you vary overall beak shape. That's facilitated variation.